afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ramona Arena, and welcome to the second digital launch of Mercedes-Benz India, that of the new GLS. Please join me in welcoming the MD and CEO of Mercedes-Benz India, Martin Schwenk. Hi, Martin. Good afternoon, Ramona. How are you? Very well, no complaints. Looking forward to the show. <laughs> me too, me too. Martin, we all know that this has been a really difficult time for everybody. First up, what is your message to everyone that's joined us today? Well, I mean, the Corona crisis was the black swan, swan nobody had seen coming. I mean, all of us are fighting it, uh, and uh, I'm very convinced uh, together we will overcome it. Our priority remains with the people. That's the people in our factory, that's the people uh, in the dealerships and, of course, uh, our customers. So we have to make sure that everyone is healthy and safe, and we have for that implemented all the relevant protocols. For, on an industry view, the pandemic is really a, a large setback. Uh, we expect to come back uh, on track, but that will take uh, some time. I'm already a little bit positive because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel with the opening after the lockdown. Uh, but I also would want to remind all of us of our brand motto, which is restless for tomorrow. So let's look forward for tomorrow. Absolutely. And that's the kind of determined approach we really need at this moment. Um, Martin, we want to know, what has the response been from your employees at work? Are they back here? Are they back at work? <laughs> our employees are very excited uh, to join, join back. For a lot of them, it feels like the first day at work or even the first day after school vacation. So I could really see a lot of excitement uh, coming back. And in the last four weeks, we have started in a graded manner. The ramp up is going well, I would say. We have all uh, the distancing and uh, social distancing. We have uh, the cleaning protocols, everything in place. So I think everyone can also feel uh, safe and healthy. And today, we have around 600 uh, of our employees here on our premises in Pune. That is absolutely wonderful. I too couldn't wait to get back to work. And I'm so excited this is happening because there's no better place to work than here with this Mercedes-Benz India family. And speaking of getting back to work, how are the dealerships preparing to receive customers, Martin? I'm really happy to share that all our dealerships and the service centers are operational now. So that means 100% are ready at work and they're supporting the customers. In order to get there, we have implemented uh, social distancing, we have implemented health um, and safety measures in every dealership, and we monitor that regularly uh, so that it really complied to. So I see now customers are slowly coming back, but slowly but surely, I should say. <laughs> um, I'm convinced uh, it will take a little bit more time, but I also see sentiments slowly but surely coming back, and confidence with the customers will improve. That's amazing. Martin, like you said, we are really in the middle of a never seen before crisis. What are your sale expectations for 2020? 2020 <laughs> is for sure a challenging year. The auto industry was already facing headwinds in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, then we had the transition to BS6. Uh, now with uh, COVID-19, sales have literally stopped. Looking at our brand, we also have a year of transition. Key volume models are in changeover, and this causes some constraints to us. Mm. In the quarter one, we didn't have the CLA, the GLA, the GLS to sell. The GLE was still in ramp up. And I guess we lost around 1,000 units in the first quarter of this year because of this. The positive part is that we are launching 10 models over the year. Ooh. We expect really an improvement of the business climate and a full availability of our product portfolio, and with that, uh, a good fourth quarter of 2020. It's so nice to see that despite you, the fact that you're facing so many challenges, you're remaining optimistic. And you're optimistic about the market as well, which says a lot. So the availability of volume cars will definitely be something that I think everybody will look forward to. And we hope we have enough cars to hand over to our customers. And when we talk about handing over to customers, how do you see the online trend moving from here on? I mean, every crisis creates at the same time an opportunity and for us in the industry it definitely was a strong push towards online sales platforms. We made big progress uh, along these lines uh, for new cars and used cars. We launched a work from home campaign with a very strong resp response. 
Um, in future, we would expect that online sales and uh, traditional brick and mortar sales will complement each other. And I would really expect uh, that uh, we see a trend uh, that grows into that direction. What I would not want to fail to talk about is uh, it online doesn't mean just uh, online click, click, click on, on the website. It also means you have to have interaction with the customers. And for that, we have, for example, introduced what we call online sales concierge, uh, a direct consultation possibility for every customer uh, directly with uh, someone at the dealership, the online sales concierge, mm -hmm. uh, who gives all information around product, pricing, financing options, and so forth. And with that, we have already had uh, more than a thousand consultations in the last couple of weeks wow. uh, through that online concierge. So when we talk about online sales, it is definitely complementing online and offline sales. And it is a host of activities we have to do there to support the customers, to meet them where they are. Right. That is incredible. I would never even have imagined that I could get a Mercedes-Benz home delivered to me. I'm sure you're very proud of your whole team for achieving I this. Can Clearly support that, yeah, clearly, yeah. <laughs> so lots of talk about slowdown and soft customer demand in the market. What is Mercedes-Benz doing to excite customers and to just bring that demand, create demand back in the market? Yeah, that's one of the biggest uh, challenges we have at the moment. We launched what we call Wishbox 2.0. Mm -hmm. uh, that is really thought to stimulate the demand in the market. This is customized solutions to empower customers financially. Uh, with Wishbox 2.0, we offer three different ways. For example, a 10-year loan, something that has never been there in the industry before. There's a three-month EMI holiday uh, at the beginning of, of the loan, for example, in another offering, or a six-month with minimal EMI to take the original or the initial um, hesitation out of, uh, out of the purchase decision. Right. So I think we had had uh, quite substantial success with uh, our previous wish box and now um, I'm very confident with the response we already have received in the last two weeks this creates quite some momentum for us. That is awesome. I hope that many customers make their wish of buying a Mercedes come true with the wish box. I know which one I would buy but has there been any particular segment in the market that's kind of been the flavor of the season? We all know Indians love their SUVs. <laughs> yeah. MB India has about 37,000 uh, Mercedes uh, SUVs on the roads. So all over the country, uh, customers are driving these cars. And 2020 for Mercedes is for sure an SUV year. We have, we have a completely <laughs> new portfolio. Uh, GLC, GLC Coupe, uh, GLE already launched. Right. And now we come with the GLS and then later in the year uh, with the GLA. So I think uh, a very strong presence. And uh, so the SUV is really the theme we are following through at the moment. So amazing. More to look forward to in terms of SUVs for SUV-loving Indians. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So Martin, coming to today's hero, the GLS. How important is this SUV to Mercedes-Benz? The GLS. Previously, we called the GL, and many, many uh, fans still call the GLS the GL, <laughs> is for us uh, the S-Class of the SUVs. Right. Um, it's the largest and most luxurious Mercedes uh, SUV. It's now in its third generation. Uh, the first generation came in 2006, and then the second then in 2012. Since then, Mercedes has globally sold 5.7 lakh of GLS. And I think uh, this number illustrates the importance of the GLS for the brand um, globally. Right. That definitely makes GLS a huge success. So tell us about when the GLS came to the Indian market and how important the GLS is for this market. Very important for us is the G GLS obviously as well. It sits on the top of our product pyramid. We have had 10 years of very good sales um, in, in India with the GLS. Initially, it was imported from 2010, uh, mm -hmm. but then from 2013, we started local production here in uh, Chakan, in Pune then eventually, and uh, I can just say it is the segment leader as it stands, and we have sold more than 6,700 uh, GLS. Uh, wow. That uh, will tell you at the same time that is very well accepted with the customers and uh, it has definitely a very strong importance for Mercedes-Benz in India. 
Wow, so basically it's a decade, which is a huge milestone. So congratulations to you thank and you, thank you. Team Mercedes-Benz India. <laughs> Thanks. So what are some of the most important highlights according to you in the new GLS? The new GLS is, is bigger and better in every way, I would say. It has a massive uh, legroom. We, we have 87 millimeters more of legroom. It has comfortable reclining seats. So that's really something uh, which, which a lot of our customers will like. At the same time, it is something for technology lovers. We have MBUX fully connected uh, the vehicle you have in the rear, an Android tablet with that. You can steer uh, functions of the vehicle itself with, uh, with direct interaction here. So mm -hmm. it is techy at the same time. It's very luxurious for longer trips. It's really a car, uh, a, a big step up to, to the current model. Oh, I know everybody is definitely very eagerly awaiting to catch that first look at the new GLS. But before that, Martin, tell me, how are operations ramping up? Our operations have begun back in, on May 6th. We started in a graded approach, mm -hmm. but I would still say very consistent and swift. But I would give the word here to my colleague Piyush uh, to give more details about that. Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you to this unique virtual visit to the place where stars are born, right here in Chakan, Pune. Today is a very special day for all of us as we launch the most awaited new GLS, the biggest car in our portfolio. Like many others, our operations also went into lockdown in the month of March to safeguard health of our employees, our business partners in particular, as well as society in general. But we are back and I have been ramping up production in graded manner, ensuring all safety protocols, including hygiene, distancing requirements, following each and every government direction, and also our own global safety benchmarks. While our ramp up is step by step, our aim is to reach 100% pre-COVID capacity and I am confident that with the dedication and the motivation of our teams, we will be there soon. As part of Mercedes-Benz global ambition, 2039, decarbonization is one of our main objectives. We are striving towards running our complete operations on 100% green power. If decarbonization is critical for the future of this planet, Digitalization is critical for being future ready. Mercedes-Benz globally and we here at Mercedes-Benz India are pursuing digitalization in all our shop floor management for making our processes more efficient, real time and supporting the agile decision making. I believe that embracing digitalization and industrialization 4.0 elements will pave the way for us to always remain ahead of competition. Having talked about all these initiatives, I am happy to reiterate that the first GL class was rolled out in this very factory way back in 2013. And now, let's go and look at the assembly operations of the new GLS. Our state-of-the-art manufacturing facility is the backbone of our growth story in India and we are confident that continuing with the success story with the new GLS. In these unprecedented times, I hope for fast recovery from the pandemic. Stay safe, take care and hope to see you next time personally. Thank you. digitization and sustainability efforts happening right here at the plant. That is awesome. Martin, it's that moment that we've all been waiting for. I am ready. I know everyone out there is ready because everyone wants to get the look, the look at the beautiful outdoorsy all new GLS. But we unfortunately can't do that unless you're ready. So Martin, are you ready? Well, why should I not be ready? Come on, let's go outside and have a look. Yeah? Let's do it. 
I see the beautiful red car that you already selected as your new company car. Thanks Martin for the offer, but I'm not <laughs> sure if this car will remain with us after the today's launch today. But thank oh, you. We'll Thanks. See. I will okay, now take Sajar. the views through. So once again, welcome from my side for joining on this digital launch uh, for the all new GLS. Of course, we could have met in person as we have done in the past. But uh, I think in today's condition, this is the best solution we could offer. And so we thought, let's take a bit step ahead and maybe bring you as close to the car as possible. And I will try to do my best. So what you see here right now is the new GLS. Of course, we have a new color, the Hisense Red, for the first time debuting in the new GLS as such. The one thing about GLS has always been the size and our consumers always loved it. It's a segment leader as such and our engineers have only made it bigger. So if you see this car, this car has now, the overall length has been increased by 77 mm. The width has been increased by 22 mm and that makes the wheelbase go up right till 60 mm. So there's a lot of advantages with this. You will see that when we go into the interior of the car, how much space this offers. So the size is something really striking for the new GLS as such. Also for a big car, you need big set of alloys. And if you see here, these are new 21 inch alloy wheels, uh, also well suited for all the off-roading duties that this car would require for any customer. Coming to the rear, I think it's, it's a well-sculpted rear, all new rear design here as such. I, we see the new 3D uh, tail lamps. Uh, of course, it looks aesthetically nice, but it's also meant for safety. Uh, when I open the boot, and uh, it's no surprise the GLS always had a large boot, but there is something more here. For the first time, we have given an all function. So what this does, so at the click of this button, now you can see this entire cargo space getting transformed. All the seats go completely flat out and you get 2,400 liters of boot space. So you can, uh, consumers can put in cycles there, they can put a golf kit, all the loading is possible. Further, if you see the height of this car can also be adjusted by 50 mm uh, just because it's aimatic. So for easy loading and unloading, you can get the car height down and the consumers can easily use these cars. Also, the other feature, if you see on the extreme left here, is a, uh, is a USB port and the USB port on the third seat. But it's not enough because I think what's important is this car has 11 USB ports. Yes, 11 uh, in general uh, and it's all over the car. So our gadget freaks, they can actually charge their devices at any given point of time at any from any position in the car as such. Also, it has an easy pack tailgate here. So for easy closure. Uh, of the of the rear boot so with this we go to the key highlight of the car which is in the inside so let me take you through there well there is a reason the gls is often referred as the s class of suvs and the moment you see inside this space it's a cocoon by itself large panoramic sunroofs you can see well appointed uh, uh, the, the leather seats as such you have a 13 speaker Burmester sound system so that's all a given what we have also added is small things like this pillows uh, the neck rest if you see here and then to give space so it's quite comfortable here but to add to more space we have the chauffeur package so all one needs to do is to just press of a button the front seat really goes right till the front and then as I mentioned earlier, thanks to the longer wheelbase, you get 87 mm of space here, one can just relax here. Also, this has a 30 degree uh, recline possible, so once you deselect this, you go back and right there you can see 30 mm of space right there so that one can easily relax, fold your legs and be comfortable. But Martin also mentioned that he likes the GLS not only because it's luxury, but it's also a bit more digitally enabled. And let me show you what's there. So immediately you will see this touchscreen in the rear. Of course, this is a rear seat entertainment package. It's not a standard with the new GLS, but the pre-wiring is done. Anybody can just buy it as form of accessories as such. Then come some new features. So the moment I take down the new center armrest, the eyes immediately go on to this new tablet right here. So this tablet is an Android one and if you see here uh, the customers can easily select their radio channels, the media, comfort and also do the various settings here. Uh, 
on the comfort side you also see that the ambient lighting can be set from the rear seat you also have five zone air conditioning and this air conditioning is with charcoal filters which means you get clean air there are two zones in the front two in the mid and one in the rear so uh, the air conditioning is and all of this can be controlled from the tablet which is right there in the rear seat also being on an android platform uh, basically this can be also connected via wi-fi uh, and then you can use kids can play games or one can use it for any other purposes as a normal android tablet so that in general gives you some sense of space some sense of uh, what features or the, the luxury cushion we have here apart from this i already mentioned the 11 usb ports uh, i will add two more so basically there is wireless charging that you see here right now so the moment you keep your phone it can be charged as one in the front so in all 13 odd charging points uh, you know my colleagues and my friends in product management they call this as a power bank on wheels you can load this up with as many gadgets in a space for charging in the car apart from the small things like the cup holders etc which are there in the rear so now with this let me show you a bit more uh, from the from the exterior perspective so when you look into this car again uh, i think right in the front you see the new led uh, uh, headlamps and here it's 112 leds on each of them but what it really does it gives a throw of 650 meters yes 650 meters is more than half a kilometer of uh, distance and that makes the occupant safer driving safer and this is again uh, high high discharge led headlamps being introduced for the first time in the new gls also many of you would have already seen the large grills but yes these grills are in proportion with the car size but definitely they give a character to the new gls as such let me now go into the front seat the driver seat which is my favorite area in the whole new gls yeah there when we come to the front seat here you see this steering wheel with napa leather it's it's all touch uh, it's the latest sporty steering wheel that we are offering and immediately the attention gets grabbed to the two displays the 12.3 inch uh, touch screen displays that we can see right in the front of course, it has all the MBUX, it has all the latest features uh, on, uh, from Mercedes Me for navigation and for others. But something which I like particularly is this personalization feature. So if you see here, right now it shows the profiles. I can set it uh, based on my preferences. I press my name here, Santosh. Now the moment I say yes, the seats all go back to the position that I have set it up. The air conditioning is based on what I need. Uh, the, the, the front displays are all based on my personal preferences, the ambient lighting changes. So technically you can store multiple profiles. So if I am driving, my wife, driver or any of them, each can store individual profiles and you don't need to fiddle around with any of the settings. Uh, right from the aircon to the ambient lighting, everything is set up. Also, uh, of course, this is a touchscreen setup that you see here when you go to the comfort package, including seat kinetics. Now this is for the first time we launch it in the new GLS for the both the driver and the passenger side so these seat kinetics means you can get a nice massage for yourself and the co-passenger and this can also be configured so as i said uh, there are many connect features uh, a touchpad uh, with with a haptic touchpad so which also gives you feedback but one more feature which i would like to share is also the amatic suspension possibility with a switch here so with a touch of a button one can actually increase the height of the car or decrease it by 60 mm and that really makes it uh, cool because uh, based on your driving preferences or the road conditions you can adjust the si uh, the height of the car with just touch of a button so this is just uh, a quick peek into what the car offers what 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 equipments it has and maybe i will share a bit more in a while so with this we have seen uh, it's it, it's quite a well equipped car i have tried to bring you as close as possible to this car but then there's a short video film and then i see you on the other side to talk a bit more about telematics and certain other features so please enjoy the video
Mercedes. How can I help you? enjoyed that short film it definitely gives you a, a quick view on what's all in offer in the new GLS now let me take you through some more details on this fascinating product we have not touched the heart of this car which is the engine the GLS 400 D is powered by an OM 656 six cylinder inline engine that gives an output of 330 horsepower and 700 Newton meter of torque it can sprint from 0 to 100 in just 6.3 seconds we also have a petrol option which is called the GLS 450 and it's a six cylinder mill in line with the 48 volt technology. And this engine churns out 367 horsepower, 500 Newton meter of torque with an additional 250 Newton meter or 22 and 22 horsepower via the EQ boost. And this happens over short periods. This is the first time EQ boost premieres in the new GLS. It can also sprint from zero to 100 in just 6.2 seconds. Needless to mention, both these engines not only comply with the BS6 emission norms, but they also comply with the advanced Euro 6D standard. Let me now, I already shared a bit on the interior right in front with the car, but also if you see here, the interior of the new GLS is all about luxury and elegant aesthetics. It combines the comfort of a Mercedes-Benz luxury saloon with a progressive detailing of an SUV. As you saw earlier, with leather premium appointments, anything you see or touch gives you a sense of luxurious fit and finish. It just simply looks stunning, especially during the night drives because the inside cabin completely lights up as per your personal taste. All these gizmos and tech from our industry leading MBUX can easily be accessed via touch, voice, or even without any contact and it becomes more relevant in today's contactless world. Yes, we also have the MBUX interior assistant, which is basically contactless gesture control. This innovative system detects and interprets your hand and arm movements. This also means you can activate selected functions just in a matter of seconds by, with gesture of your hands. We are also glad today to announce a new phase of connected technology on the sidelines of the new GLS launch. Our connected app, which we shared with you end of last year, uh, has now an all new user interface and additionally a new Mercedes Me service app that offers seamless online appointment bookings. As you see in these slides, uh, the new interface is sharper and easier to consume. The key highlight being the new map interface which comes with colored 3D map layouts. It also has biometric ID access for unlocking the car. All in all, your Mercedes Me app not only looks good, but keeps you connected always, regardless of wherever, whichever part you are in the world, regardless of your physical location. The new Mercedes Me app, also with intuitive user interface, will be rolled out for all our Mercedes Me Connect owners starting 1st July 2020. Our customers also can upgrade their existing apps once they receive a push notification on their current apps, and then it's good to go. Now let me also share today a very another important announcement for all of you. We are in a connected world and our cars are also connected too. On the screen, you see how Mercedes Me Connect works. Connect offers real-time car analytics, remote control of car features, real-time traffic updates, and the car communicates to the cloud and to the Mercedes-Benz app. The platform also allows over-there updates possibly directly to the cars without any manual intervention. So this is again a very big highlight. We will now be deploying this over the air update to all our Mercedes Me connected cars in India. The new GLS also receives all these updates as are other cars which we have sold with Mercedes Me features over the last three to four months time. Some of the key new additions include geofencing that allows a perimeter to be set for the car movement so that they can receive notification in case the vehicle is moving beyond the set parameter. A very useful feature again in the Indian context. This means your Mercedes-Benz is always under your control regardless of your physical location. Particularly useful for kids to go to school and to keep track on their movements. Uh, it, it becomes quite handy and useful. The windows and sunroof can now be opened and closed from the app again anywhere, anytime. 
It also comes with a vehicle finder that enables the car's horn, flashes the light, and this is specifically handy when you go to a mall or a large parking lot to find your car. As the segment leaders in connected car technology, we are also proud to offer this upgrade, again free of cost to all our current Mercedes Me Connect customers and the updates will be rolled out soon. They will get their notification and their head units will also be done over the air. So now with this, I would like to take you through about a bit about our GLS customers. Most of our customers are part of successful business families. They are entrepreneurs who have worked very hard to be successful. There is also a uniqueness in every each one of these customers. They are sophisticated who do not take information just at a face value. They are perfectionists at what they do and are constantly reinventing the wheel to stay ahead of the curve. The new GLS is actually designed with exactly these customer profiles in mind and who love the S-Class comfort and the luxury but coupled with a raw appeal of a terrain prowess of an SUV. Today, for the first time ever, we also have a customer among with us for a launch who can also be interacting with you. So, and this, I won't give away more details. I now hand it over to my host, our host, Ramona. All over to you. Thank you so much, Santosh. I now have the privilege of welcoming a very special guest present with us today. The Deputy Managing Director of Bharat Forge, Mr. Amit Kalyani. Hi, how Hi are there, you? Hi, Ramona. Good afternoon, Amit. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Bharat Forge is part of the three billion US dollar conglomerate Kalyani Group. Bharat Forge is the world's largest forging company and amongst one of the best aerospace and automotive forging companies. They have transcontinental presence in 10 manufacturing locations spread across India, Germany, Sweden, France, and North America. This is a very special moment because for the first time, Mercedes-Benz India is launching a car with a special customer. Since we have Mr. Kalyani here with us today at the launch of the new GLS, I can't resist. I have to ask him a quick question. Mr. Kalyani, you have three GLSs mm -hmm. in your garage, including one very dreamy and beautiful AMG GLS 63. Yes. Why do you think Mercedes-Benz calls it the S-Class of SUVs? Well, first of all, uh, the S-Class is an aspirational car for everyone. It's the car that you want to be driven around with when you've arrived. Uh, for a lot of younger people like me, and uh, when we have families, children, and you know, to carry around, right. uh, <laughs> and to be driven around uh, in our situation in India, I think the GLS gives you the kind of comfort, the space, the prestige, the safety and the ability to traverse our roads in every weather, whether it's the monsoon, any condition, in a manner that's like an S-Class, but gives you a little more than what the S-Class has in terms of flexibility. So it's perfect vehicle for India. Um, I've been very happy. I've, uh, my first GL was more than 10 years ago, or just about 10 years wow. ago. Uh -huh. and. Uh, I liked it so much, I bought a second one and then I bought a third one and the third one was the <laughs> AMG and it's it's an absolute monster, it's comfortable, practical, spacious and it's got a lot of power. So I it's great fun. I can only imagine, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and now today we have a new one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it looks beautiful. It, so I'm, I'm uh, eager to learn more about the sure. new one today. Right. Well, Martin, I'm sure you must also be eager to ask Mr. Kalyani some questions. Yeah, I'm really privileged that you join us today for that our second digital launch. We wanted to have it a little bit interactive and I'm really glad that you could make it as our esteemed customer but also uh, an industry leader. And I would have a few questions to you as well. The first one I, I'd like to ask is how is Barrett Forge dealing with the current situation? I mean, it's difficult for all of us, but how do you, how do you weather the storm at the moment? So Bharat Forge is a company where, you know, about 60% of our revenue comes from outside India. So we are supplying all the major OEMs in the passenger car and truck sector, including the Daimler truck side, Mercedes on the car side, and many, many others. So obviously, whatever happens to our customers happens to us. Uh, and Specifically coming to India, we were already in a difficult situation last year in India with the commercial vehicle sector being down, the passenger car sector being down, and then this lockdown for almost two and a half months has been very difficult. But I think Indians by nature are very optimistic people. We are a young country, 
And uh, the way we are dealing with it is, A, you have to have resilience, which is both financial, technological and people. And then you have to communicate very effectively. You have to have strong communication with your customers, with all your stakeholders, both within the company, within the ecosystem that you operate, whether it's your customers, your suppliers, your employees, the society that you live in. And really, you have to find something positive to do even during the downturn. So we are trying to do whatever positive things we can to help people yeah. during this downturn. Mm. I can and I can fully agree. Uh, I yeah. mean that that makes so much sense. Also communication. I found myself as being one of the key elements to employees, uh, to stakeholders, uh, the dealers for us specifically. Yeah. So it's really really important. I mean going into the broader field and a little bit out of the crisis scenario itself. Bharat Forge is also known for being very innovative. Right. Um, is there any innovation you would like to point out specifically today? So one of the areas that we've been focusing a lot on is sustainability. So for example, one of the big sustainability measures that we undertook about uh, seven, eight years ago was we started, we developed a new technology for aluminum forging, which is extremely green, which reduces energy usage by more than 50%. CO2 substantially gets reduced. And this is a product that we have now for the last five to six years been offering our customers and in fact, Mercedes is a big client of ours and in fact we are building a new plant to make these in North America for our North American customers including Mercedes. That is one. And the second is our overall sustainability. We are focusing a lot on reduction of carbon, reusing all our waste and recycling our waste and substantially reducing usage of water to be carbon neutral by 2030. Sounds very good to me, specifically since we obviously also fully uh, committed to we uh, to getting a greener company uh, on the long run and in the midterm. So a lot of activities happen already now. I mean, uh, a more personal question. I, I mean, you spoke about your GLS journey already, but I know you have even more Mercedes uh, yes. in your stable, so to say. Is there any car you would consider your personal favorite Mercedes uh, that you really, really love? So my personal face, for, uh, my favorite Mercedes will be my next one. That, 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 that's the right answer, I have to say that. So I have to justify <laughs> buying a new car, so that's, uh, that's the way I do it. Okay, I mean, that is a very good answer. Yeah. <laughs> We're happy. <laughs> All right, and now you get a chance, Mr. Kalyani, to ask Martin any questions that you may have for him. So what's next for uh, Mercedes-Benz India? I mean... Uh, everybody talks about sustainability and environment and I happen to see uh, EQ outside. So what's on the horizon for your customers in India to look forward to? Is there an EQ that we can look forward to? <laughs> Obviously today we are in the launch of the GLS, but uh, I was already talking about our full SUV uh, renewal we do at the moment over the entire uh, brand. Uh, the EQC will be the first electric car and we will launch that car in a couple of weeks from now. So uh, you will see it as well and there's another opportunity to put one into your garage. Yeah? <laughs> uh, right now we have it here already on our premises but uh, the originally planned launch for, uh, for April, we delayed that a little bit because of the current situation. Yeah. So it will take a few more weeks but it's definitely slated to come. Um, and it will come as another element of our product offensive this year. Ten products we have lined up and ten products shall come. Good. Um, look you. forward to it. Thank you. Me too. I have so loved this conversation <laughs> over here today. And we're so glad that you joined us. Thank you so yeah, much, thank Mr. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. And thank you for Mercedes India for having me. Thanks, Amit, for thank joining. You. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you very much. All right, Martin, I know that you still have a few more things that you want to talk about over here with everybody. So connected cars are the way forward for the industry. Mm. Tell us more about the connected cars from Mercedes-Benz. I mean, we live in a digital world. Uh, more and more digitization is all over and Mercedes-Benz has clearly uh, subscribed to that. Our products, and I think MBUX is a very good example of that, are fully digital in the meantime, connected, but also our services. You can, uh, you can get the service digitally. We can have over-the-air updates, as we heard. Production is becoming digital and more efficient. And then, obviously, on the customer side, we have on also online sales, which we spoke already about. Uh, that is another uh, strong leg to move into a digital buying process there as itself. Right, so the digital world totally revolves around innovation and we all know that innovation and Mercedes-Benz go hand in hand. 
Is there any specific innovation that Mercedes-Benz Research and Development India has done recently? Yeah, I mean, we have uh, MBRDI, as we call them, our colleagues in Bangalore, and they're very active in the development around the MBUX. So uh, the colleagues have shown how fast uh, they can react to situations uh, and adapt, and they have introduced now into, into our MBUX navigation system the locations of COVID-19 testing centers. Uh, this has been developed in association with MapMy India, but I think it is an example of uh, quick de development and deployment, and it is available uh, to all uh, MBUX-capable uh, vehicles, every car, mm -hmm. GLC, GLE, and obviously GLS we, we sold in the meantime. Um, and it's for the start available in all major cities, Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, Bangalore, and obviously Hyderabad and Pune as well. It will further develop. So I really think that is... Uh, something which, which more displays what we can do, mm -hmm. then I would hope that you would have to use it. Yeah? Because obviously I would hope uh, none of our customers uh, comes into the situation that they actually have to use that feature. Absolutely right you are. I hope nobody has to use that particular feature either. Now moving on to the question that is on everyone's minds, Martin. How much is it going to cost to own the new GLS? And what is the cost of maintenance going to be for it? Cost of ownership is an important focus area for Mercedes-Benz. Um, the GLS service packages start at 82,100 rupees. They are for two years and unlimited kilometers. But now, finally, uh, let me <laughs> come to the information I guess everyone is waiting for yeah. being here in the room, but obviously uh, in the streaming uh, as well, um, the price of the new GLS. Both uh, the diesel GLS 400 diesel and the petrol 450 GLS are priced at 99 point luck ex showroom India. All right. I can't wait to hand over the check to you for it as soon Please as do this so, is yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> But we still have a little more work to do before I get there. There are lots of questions coming in for you from our audience across all our various different social media platforms. So let's just take a few. We have Ajit who asks, everyone has already erased 2020 from their calendar. What is your opinion on 2020? Well, I mentioned that earlier already. It is a challenging and difficult year for the industry, actually for everyone living at the moment in the, in the world. Uh, it will certainly take us a little bit uh, more time to really get over uh, the COVID situation itself and for the industry and as for us as a brand, I think we will slowly but surely uh, come back. We have to, as Amit says, also create a little bit of positive momentum because at the end it is the sentiment which needs to come back and I also feel Indians are very resilient. So I'm, I'm very confident that in the next couple of weeks then and towards the festive season hopefully we come back with, uh, with a stronger uh, sentiment and customer uh, activity I, I would say. On the other hand we have 10 new products uh, lined up. Uh, they are coming. I mentioned that already and I think products is always what the brand also stands for. Yes. Uh, GLS today, tomorrow, maybe EQC or very <laughs> soon after. Yeah, I, I think that uh, will create a lot of uh, momentum as well and attract uh, customers. So I'm, I'm looking forward uh, for the next couple of weeks and then uh, towards the fourth quarter, I'm, I'm hopeful that we see a better situation. So are we. Our next question comes from Webhav, and he says, you have not spoken about the EQC. Is the EQC coming this year, or is it postponed? So, <laughs> somehow, the actual events ha have been faster than uh, the question here, <laughs> because Amit asked me that question. That shows, actually, to the audience, we are really, really live. Uh, I have answered the question. I would right. want to re-emphasize uh, the EQC is part of our plan. We, start, we have launched the brand EQ uh, already in January with, uh, and started onto the journey of uh, sustainable drivetrains and electrification. And we really, uh, uh, really fool in and we will come with reasonable volumes uh, then uh, very soon um, with the EQC. In quarter three, you will see it then in the showrooms and I'm really, really sure we'll see a lot of them on the roads then as well. Absolutely. Clearly exciting times ahead for sure. Thank you all so much for sending in your questions. I know that we will all be looking forward to seeing how things go and shape up. 
I'm sure we're going to glide through the challenges thanks to the positive outlook and environment that you and your entire team at Mercedes-Benz India have been creating. Thank you so much, Martin. As always, it's a pleasure catching up with you. Let's all remember the best is yet to come. Stay positive. And with that, I say goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm Ramona Arena, and I leave you with a first look at our television commercial on the star of the day, the all-new GLS. You can't put wings on a car. You can't see an accident coming or walk away from one like this. You can't make a car talk. How can I help you? You can't fight gravity. And you can't make one of the world's best SUVs even better. Go on, tell us what else we can't do. The all-new GLS. Possibly the safest, most spacious, most Mercedes SUV ever made.